had that little question in Pharaoh's mind. I don't know if he's going to come back. So he sent his army with him. Because there might have been a little, I don't want to stay. You ever thought about that? I never thought about that. Because they were all there. They could have just said that this is it. This is where we're going. But none of them would see it. Not one of them. This is what I was trying to tell you. They knew their descendants were going to see it. But not one of them was ever going to see that promised land. Or ever going to experience that promise. Wow. In the natural, of course. But their descendants were promised to not only see it, but to live there. What would that have felt like? They had to pass their promise onto their children. They didn't physically get it. Look what it says in Hebrews 11:22. By faith, Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the exodus of the sons of Israel and gave orders concerning his bones. Why do you think it says by faith? Because he knew that God's word was sure that his bones could not be buried in Egypt, even though he would have had a great monument, monument made to him and everything. It's just like Moses. Remember, Moses had everything he could possibly want in Pharaoh's household, but he had to take off his shoes and exchange his inheritance, earthly inheritance, for the heavenly one. That's what that means. It's called a sandal covenant. The Bible has four covenants. That's being a steward. That's, taking, that's, that's pouring your life out and saying, Lord, I want what's coming. I don't want to focus on this world. I don't care how much the world gives me. I don't want it. Because this is not eternity. That's, that you, you're fooled if you, if you believe that. Genesis 50, 15 through 17. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, what if Joseph bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong we did to him? So they sent a message to Joseph saying, your father charged before he died saying, thus you shall say to Joseph, please forgive, I beg you, the transgression of your brothers and their sin for they did you wrong. And now please forgive the transgression of their servants, of, of the servants of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. You know, he had been taking care of them all this time. They still did not know his heart. I mean, there are people that just really believe that they've done so much that Jesus is eventually going to whack them one day. <laughs> I mean, the blood of Jesus has set them free from all that. But they still are expecting. They're still carrying those chains. Even though God set them free from it, they're still carrying those chains of guilt. They still believe that they need to get repaid for what they did. And that's what's going on with Joseph's brothers because he's a type and shadow of the Messiah. But Joseph forgave them. He's taking care of them and their families. And verse 18 through 21, Then his brothers also came and fell down before him, saying, Behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for I am in God's place. As for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good in order to bring about this present result to preserve many people alive. So therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. So he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. That's one of my favorite verses in the Bible. And I see it all through Joseph's life. The devil means evil for us. But if he attacks you, that's why the Bible says rejoice. Because that means that you're going to have the victory. That means he's trying to keep you back from something that God's got right around the corner. He means evil for you, but every time he touches you, you get better. You get a choice to be better or bitter. That's, that's the deal. When the devil strikes, it can, either, it can either make you bitter, where you blame God and you blame other people and you go around a mountain, the same mountain, all your life. Or you love God and go, I don't know why I'm going through this, but I love you and I trust you. And you, be, you become just like Joseph. And God turns it all around for you. 
And you, he one day takes the blinders off and he says, the reason why you went through a bad marriage is because I want you to be able to minister to those who are in bad marriages. The reason why you were physically abused is because I want you to minister to those who were physically abused. That's powerful. It's, it's one thing when you start talking to somebody and trying to minister to them. It's another thing when you've been there and you're ministering to them. And you're saying, look at me. I got through it. I'm a testimony. You can do this too. That's powerful. That gives them hope. But if you haven't been through it, it's, it's hard to, I mean, if you've never been, anything, been through anything, you've had just a, a cush life. You don't have a moaning. You don't have a testimony, right? So Joseph's life, it really, it gives me a lot of hope because the devil would strike him every time he struck him. God advanced him. Even when it looked like, even when it looked like when he was sold into slavery, Okay, and he was the bottom slave. He worked his way up to the top slave. And then he worked his way up to the top of Potiphar's house and his field. And then Potiphar's wife did what she did. And then it looked like he went all the way back down, doesn't it? It looked like he went into jail. And he was in jail for 13 years. It looked like he went, but he didn't. It's very important. The Bible says he went into the king's palace. Not the regular palace. He went into the king's palace. So he actually went up. He was in position for the baker and the cupbearer to come there when God's appointed time came for him to be able to interpret the dream. See, as Joseph trusted, God advanced. God advanced. God advanced. And then one day, Joseph's told, shave Change your clothes. You're wanted in Pharaoh's palace right now. Can you imagine? And then he interprets a dream, and then he is second in command. See, it's all steps. As you trust God, it looks like the devil is just taking you down, taking you down. But if God would just take those blinders off your eyes for just a second and show you what's really going on, it's quite remarkable. What the devil means for evil God will always turn it around for good if you trust him. Amen. Joseph fully understand that the fences committed by his brothers could only happen if God allowed them. Our trials and sins of our own life have led us to the place that God planned. He planned our life with all the bumps and all the bruises because we are hardened in our suffering. You know, a lot of people, they, they like the God of niceness. But if I was a parent that just gave my kids all the good things, I'd make them spoiled brats. I'm not doing that to my kids. I'm going to make them do some hard stuff. They've got to work for what they want. Right? Same thing with God. He's not going to hold back one of those bumps and bruises from you because he knows it's part of your growth process. And, and still, he's a good God. You don't get to ask why. You don't get to ask why. You don't know why right now. You'll know why later. But you don't get to ask why right now. You just have to trust. That's what faith is all about. It's just trusting. But like I said, we have to have a money to have a testimony. For the things that still hurt, things that don't make any sense, only God knows why that was necessary. Now, the end is Genesis 50, 22 and on. 54 years later, after Jacob dies, Joseph dies. And what gets me is that there wasn't a, a procession. There wasn't a procession when Joseph died. His father had one, but remember, things had turned upside down. Remember that when Joseph was raised to the second hand of Pharaoh, that Pharaoh was a Hyksos, which was a Semite which was actually related to Joseph. Well, what happened in history was they rose to the top and they subdued the Egyptians for a while. That's why it's specific that it says Pharaoh, I'm sorry, Potiphar was an Egyptian. That's important because there were people that were living in Egypt that were not Egyptians. They were Semites, remember? And so what happened was, and we're going to find it when we go to Exodus, the Egyptians now take over again. 
and the evil Pharaoh comes back. And it actually shows in the words where it says that a Pharaoh rose that did not know Joseph. That's not what it 